Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to do a mitered border, border for a quilt where you've got more than one fabric border that you're wanting to mitre. So I've got this nice little quilt top um, waiting for its borders here and I'm going to... I wanted a nice white border like I've got this white fabric here but then I thought it would be quite nice if it had an extra colour in between. So I wanted it to have this um, sort of aqua greeny colour and I thought quite like the idea of it being mitered because somehow it seems to suit that style of quilt. And so in order to do the mitre with two borders rather than just putting one on and then putting another one on, if you're going to mitre any number of borders all in one go, you might as well do it all in one go. So what I've done is I've joined my first border to my outer border. So I've done it for all four sides. My quilt is square. It's not a very large quilt. It's just a lap quilt, I guess. Um, and so I've already joined my inner border to my outer border. And you have to make sure that you've got enough length for the whole quilt, including your borders, when you put mitres on. So my quilt's about 32 inches across, or it's square, so in any direction, pretty much. Um, and so my border has to be long enough for the quilt plus totally I've got I think I've got about five and a half inches yeah so I'm putting on a five inch border but it's five and a half inches now because of the seam allowance as well so I need to make sure I've got enough length to put that length either side of my quilt for the whole border now presumably you could sh if you were really short on your inner border you could shorten that but overall you, it's best to work with the full length it's easier anyway so I've got enough length here and um, so you need your the width of your quilt plus two border amounts plus a little couple of extra inches spare to allow for seam allowance and any other little things that might happen and so in the middle I want to pop a pin to mark the center of my border and the same thing on my quilt top so that I can mark so I can position the center and work out from there so I've already done that amount of pinning I'm going to pin that starting in the middle now you can pin the whole border or not as you choose but it's very helpful to pop a pin or marker in where it where the seam allowance will occur when you put the other sides on. So you could measure it, of course that's always an option. So if we put that marking there and I know that I want to come in quarter of an inch from that edge there, I'm going to put a pin in that's quarter of an inch in from my quilt top edge and I'm going to do the same on the other end. I'm just going to show you on one corner so I probably won't do this whole seam at this stage. You can put more pins in between of course um, if you prefer to do it that way to hold everything together so that because you want things to sit nicely. And now I'm going to do that seam as usual with a quarter inch seam allowance. I've got border sticking out at both ends but I'm going to start sewing a quarter of an inch in from my quilt top edge. So hence the pin there. Also if you happen to have a quarter inch foot like I've got it's got little indents along the side that will tell you when things are quarter of an inch apart so if we line up I'm coming this way if we line up the quilt top edge with the marker at the back of the foot towards the back of the foot that will start sewing at the quarter of an inch in from that edge so I'm not sure whether you can see that but that's what those little grooves on the side of the machine the, the foot are for great little feet those quarter inch feet and I'm going to come along and sew just my quarter inch seam allowance. Now I am going to do a little back stitch just to hold that there. And my quarter, now I'm just going to go halfway along so that you're not just watching me sewing lots of seams. So I'll come to my halfway marking pin. There's lots of reasons why you might want to mitre. Sometimes it looks nicer, sometimes you've got a stripe, sometimes, who knows, sometimes you just want to mitre. This is actually, a, this little colour that I've got in here, this aquary colour, is a very fine stripe, but I won't be trying to match 
those up but sometimes you might want to match up something like that and so a mitre would be really helpful so there I've got one border side on so now I'm going to do come along this edge here so I've got another border strip ready and because my quilt is square all my border pieces were cut the same length otherwise you would need to allow for the length of the quilt plus a border at each end plus a couple of inches of spare material so same thing a pin in the middle of the border and of the quilt match the pins pin them together and you can measure the distance so that you get the right amount but you want it to be you want to pin in so that it comes in a quarter of an inch in and I should have this over the other way I'll turn it over it's easier to work from this side so that you can see where your fabric starts and stop we want to put a pin quarter of an inch in from the quilt top edge and we'll do the same at the other end particularly as that's the end on the sewing So this should all line up here and you want to put a pin in right at where you stop sewing on the last seam which will be quarter of an inch in from that edge. Now because I'm coming this way it's a little bit harder to see that I could come down this way maybe I'll do that. I'm going to start halfway in the middle so that I'm going to get one corner done to show you. So we'll come this way so that it's easier if you're sewing from the quilt top side so that you can see where the fabric starts and stops at the ends. So I'm just using a regular quarter inch seam allowance here. So when you're getting to this end you want to make it so that you can see where you're going to. So it's a little bit more fiddly than just straight borders but it's kind of a nice way to finish off the sun quilts. And so I want to sew up as far as where I started and stopped the last time. So it's a little bit easier to see that this time because we've already got a seam line to that point. Little back stitch to hold, you don't want that to come unraveled. And so that's going to sit nicely. Make sure your points are sitting quite well together there. So now we've got this quilt. We've got these funny little bits flapping at the corners. Not particularly helpful just at this stage. So working with it right sides together. We're going to fold it so that our borders are sitting nice and level, the edges. And this is where working with um, a board can be quite helpful because you can sit things along and I have actually got this along a, bit, a nice mitered line on this cutting board which can be really helpful at times like this. If your board doesn't have lines like that it's uh, fairly easy to work out what that angle is anyway. So we're going to work now, we could press the seam or we can just do it as is we want that fold which we can pretty much because of this quilt working in blocks and squares I can get a nice diagonal fold through there I want to sit that on the diagonal line on the board and I want this edge of my border to sit on a straight line along the board and if this sits at the diagonal line then I can see that fold line is the line that we want to follow through right through to the edge of the border So I'm going to press or just finger hold those seams towards the quilt at the moment but using that line of the quilt and matching up down here just, a little bit. just worth, worth ch double checking that everything is sitting straight I've got my line sitting straight along here I've got my diagonal line sitting straight along here and then with a pencil I'm just going to mark that line and it pops out on my board it pops out the other side a 
of my border here. So if you had a much bigger border, well, you could move things up, of course. Another option would be a lot of rulers have diagonal lines on them. So you can set your straight line. Oh, I'm going to get this right in a minute. Your straight line here along your border edge. And the same thing, you can line up with your fold there and you would get that same angle for your corner there. So I'm going to put a couple of pins in there now to hold that in place because now that I've got it there, I don't want it to move. You're going to be sewing from the same point you started and stopped earlier. So you want to hold those fabrics out of your way when you start the sewing. It's fairly important that they're not in your way and you can go to the sewing machine now and start sewing from that same point because everything should meet at that point. And I'm going to come along that line that I've drawn. Now it's worth mentioning also because you're joining borders that you want that seam to be matching where that meets as well. So now before we go any further we'll do a quick check in case we've got to make any little alterations, hopefully not. So when I open that out that's going to, I've got a, a, a nice corner coming in there, I've got a nice join there, so I'm actually pretty pleased with the way that's looking so far. So now I'm going to trim that, so back on the wrong side again, still sitting with its um, fold through there, and with your ruler, any ruler that's got a quarter inch marking on it, you want to lay your quarter inch in from the edge of the ruler along the seam line that you've just sewn and trim off that excess that you don't need and because we cut that a little bit longer than we needed we've just got enough to play at the end there so that couple of inches extra that you add into your border length is really worthwhile. So I'm going to be pretty pleased with that border I think so I'm going to bring the iron over now and just show you how I press that so that it sits nicely. So I'm actually going to press that seam open that we've just done, but before I do that, with my scissors, where that point occurs there, I'm just going to snip in both sides of that first border, not the quilt, you're not snipping the quilt top, just the border bit, so that it can sit underneath when we press that open. just in towards the seam, the corner seam there. Lots of the iron's hot, always. So I'm going to press this seam open. So I'm going to start with that one. You might see this quilt again. I'm going to do a nice scalloped edge on this quilt after I've quilted it. So those little bits that we snipped, now you can just press that so that that seam sits nice and flat there without any problems going on. And then with our quilt top we want to press that seam in towards the border because it all just sits nicely if we do it that way. And because we've done that little snipping bit just in there, that will now sit over quite nicely when you press that. And we'll just do a little bit from the other side so that you can see how that's all starting to look there. So that's pressed open. That seam is pressed in towards the border coming from your quilt. And there we have a nice mitered border join, corner join. So I think that you would now continue on and do exactly the same process, continue the seams that I didn't finish up to the end and the other corners are all done exactly the same way. But you can do that sort of a join with any number of borders, like you could have three or four different borders if you're going to mitre them, you would just join up your borders first and you'd have to make sure that you have enough overall length 
to be the, the finished border size for your quilt. So you've got to add that each side of your quilt measurement for your length of your border. So I hope that explains for you how to do more than one border in a mitre. Thank you.